Okay, I wanted to take a second and just show you how easy it is to get started with Evil Dicom. So if you're a new user or even if you're a new programmer, it is actually incredibly easy to get started. So I have a new uh, Dicom file just sitting on my desktop and I want to see inside of it. And if you ever try to open a Dicom file in, in like a text editor, you'll see that a Dicom file is not human readable. It's not like XML or HTML. Um, it's a binary file, and it's it's difficult to read unless you have a library specifically uh, designed for reading them. And that's really what Evil Dicom is. It's a library that can consume Dicom binary files and expose the data that's inside of it. So I have started up Visual Studio, and I've gone to File New Project C Sharp Console Application. And so I've just started a very basic console application. There's nothing here that contains Evil Dicom yet. To get Evil Dicom into your project, you can go to GitHub, which is where Evil Dicom is stored, the source code is stored. You can download the source and include it in your project. Um, that's kind of more a hardcore developer kind of thing. If you want to see the source code and you want to modify it and um, or something's broken and you want to you know, see what's going on, you can do that. For most people, the easiest way to get it in your project is to right-click the references of your project, go to Manage NuGet Packages, and NuGet is an easy way to get other people's libraries into your software. It was introduced in Visual Studio 2012. And in the search bar, you can just type in Evil Dicom, and you can click Install. And it's that easy. Now it is in the project and you can use it. So to use it, let's just uh, declare a variable here. We'll call it DCM. And to open a DICOM file, which contains the DICOM object, we use the DICOM object class. Let me just get my using statements right. And you can call the open method, and that takes a string of the path of the file. So let's get the path of that file. In Windows you can hold shift and right click anything and that will give you a copy as path option. So easy to use without having to remember that long path. And So that's the path on my desktop. I am going to just go ahead and put a console read here and we'll stop it and Let's go ahead and just run this code. So if you go to your locals, your local variables up to this point, you can see that we have the DCN, the DICOM object. And it has three main properties, elements, all elements, and pixel stream. Elements are the outermost elements of a DICOM object. A DICOM object is just really a collection of DICOM elements. And the elements can be nested just like um, XML. And so that's why we have the all elements property also. So the all elements property is in the order that they appear in the DICOM object, there will be uh, more elements. So in this case, there are no nested elements. I can tell because the all elements count is the same as the elements count, which means there's nothing hiding um, under the first layer. The first layer is all there is. So the last property is the pixel stream. And this I just made available because some people want to do some type of image processing and image analysis. And let me preface it with saying that DICOM, the Evil DICOM is not a library for image anything. Um, there's very little in it except for that pixel stream um, to get to the, the uh, information. And it does not help you with JPEG decompression or JPEG 2000. Um, all of that is actually pretty complicated, and I have not included it in this library. This library is primary, primarily designed to expose data and quickly manipulate data and get it back into the DICOM object. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. So this DICOM object has an element. And I can't remember what it is, what it's called, but I know the tag number. So let's just see what what did I write down. To find an element, all elements have a DICOM tag that's unique to that element. 
And so to find an element inside the DICOM object, you can just use the find all or find first methods. Find first takes a string tag, or I also have a helper to help you get that tag. But to start, I'll just go ahead and pretend like you knew what you were looking for. So this first one, I'm gonna, I know I'm looking for the tag number 00081090. And so I'm going to go ahead and run this code and see what we got. I'm going to add a watch to it so I don't lose that data. Okay, so in this case, it was the manufacturer model name. That's what I was looking up. So the the outermost DICOM object contained that tag uh, somewhere in here. Okay, so it was element number 31. And I've tried to make these elements, I have, I've overridden the two string method for all of them so that you can see what they are when you're debugging. So you can look through this and say, you can see, first of all, the tag number. You can see what is the English description of that type of tag. What is the data type inside. These are um, DICOM. If you're a DICOM person, then you will recognize these VRs. Um, VR stands for value representation. That's the type of data that's, that the element contains. And then the last thing here is the actual data contained in the element. So in this case, we had um, the data is PQ5000. And you'll notice that the it says D data. That is dynamic typed data, so it's not strong typed. If I wanted to strong type this data, I would need to know first of all that this is a long string. It's a it's a long string type um, uh, element, or I could know that it's just a string that I'm looking for the data. And so when you find an object, you need to cast it first. as the appropriate VR type. Because there are so many different types of data um, that can be held inside a DICOM object. And without um, some really special tricks, it's, it's hard to figure out what is the underlying data type and how do you keep it strongly typed in C-sharp. Now, I do have a, um, a whole other module for doing strong type data access, and it's the selection uh, space and you can look on the website um, at rexcarden.com forward slash evil dicom and you can see some examples of how do you use the selection namespace but for this um, I just want to show you that you can get to the data without strong typing but the data will be dynamic if you want to um, get strong type data you need to cast it first and then you'll have the option to do a data uh, property and that will be strong type to whatever type element it is. So I'll run this again and this time we can see that the data is PQ5000. That's what we expected it to be because we opened up the tag earlier and saw that's what it was. Some types of elements have multiple um, data inside of them. They have, you can basically think of it like a, an array of data. Um, and so, if you're going to look at that type of data, um, there's, a, there's a different way that you want to do that. So I'm going to look up a different tag. This one I know has multiple data in it. And it's saying I can't use the data tag because um, I haven't strong typed it. Well, I know this is a decimal string type. I know that it holds double data. So I'll go ahead and run this. Oops. It's not doing anything because I didn't put a breakpoint in. Let me put the breakpoint in. Okay, and you can see that the um, data returned is one. Well, I said this has multiple data, and we only see one 
thing coming back. Why is that? Well, to accommodate multiple data types, what I have done is I've, I've made a mechanism where you can get to, you can find out if something has multiple data by using an underscore after the data property. So if you do that, then you can see Well, this is a really clear way to see it. The data property is just the first um, data that's inside of that object. And if it only has one object, then this is all you're going to see. The data underscore is an array of data if that object has um, an array, if it's an array type, if it can hold multiple pieces of data, or if its multiplicity value is greater than one. Um, in this case, this one is the image orientation uh, patient. So um, another way you can get to that tag is to use the tag helper. And this is pretty common in uh, DICOM libraries. It's just a helper class if you don't remember all of your, um, you know, how are you going to remember all of those tags? What was that called? Image orientation patient. And if you don't know what exact VR type it is, but you know what the data type is, you can you can do a generic cast to an abstract element. This is the base class for all elements, and it's a generic base class, so you can type in the type of data it's supposed to contain. And if we do that again, we should get the same result. And we did right here. So, and it's strong typed. So you could go back and uh, in C sharp, it would know that you could do multiplication on those, and it would tell you if you were doing something wrong. So that's the very basics of how to get started um, with getting data out of a DICOM object using Evil DICOM.